You don't need to go to Niagara Falls when you can eat some Brian Falls. So what's going on, Ask and iCast Collectors and iCast Reviews on YouTube? This is Original Big Rye here, and welcome to, uh, <laughs> it's been like a month since the last time I did a NASCAR to iCast News episode, so, um, yep, still around, and still gonna do this, guys, I mean, uh, even though it looks like uh, we're in an unfortunate situation, because you guys know the NASCAR offseason is finally here, but, uh, the iCast News, uh, season is almost to a close as well, um, this is probably gonna be the penultimate episode until we have probably one more, and then you guys know what the finale is which is all the 2018 NASCAR diecast release you guys definitely do love that a lot so I appreciate you guys support for that but um yeah we got a lot of cool uh, NASCAR diecast news to be talking about of course your following presents uh you know your new release diecast for 124s and 164s from our good friends at Plan B Sales. Um, all of them are going to be focused on 124 exclusives and all the 164s that were in this um category as well we also got some new pre-orders to be talking about including some of the race wins from the past month or so including your three champions uh, for the truck series the xfinity series and the monster energy nascar cup series even some homestead race wins as well <laughs> uh, we also got some five new cancellations as well for all you guys like especially for you 164 collectors out there like this chump right here um you'll be disappointed with some of the results we got and of course we also got wave 10 which believe it or not I have right in front of me, guys. Uh, no joke. So, uh, yeah, week 10, guys. Literally have it right in front of me. So, that's how far behind I am. But, without further ado, let's go ahead and kick off this new episode of the NASCAR Diecast News. But before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at the slideshow.
Alright everybody, welcome to NASCAR Diecast News. Let's get started with your newly released diecast from our good friends at Plan B Sales and or Lina Racing. And we're going to America Order like always. And the first one up, it is Jeff Gordon's number 24 DuPont 1998 Atlanta Race Win. Uh, any Jeff Gordon fans will probably remember this car since, uh, of course, this is uh, one of his most dominant seasons. I mean, uh, this car will go great just along with the Darlington win that just came out in the Gold Series and also in Wave 9 of NASCAR Authentics. Um, if you guys are familiar with uh, what happened at this race, this was a rain shortened race, and uh, I think it was called the Napa 500. Uh, so some irony right there, considering that Napa sponsors, uh, you know, what used to be the 24, but now is the 9. So, <laughs> um, gotta love that. But, um, yeah, definitely a must-get for any Jeff Gordon fans out there. I mean, just really cool that we got a lot of classics uh, released for um, for this year, especially for Jeff Gordon. Next up, we got Jay McMurray's number one McDonald's Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. Very similar to Kyle Larson McDonald's car, but this car definitely took a while because it was already released uh, from... Um, from, from uh, one of the 2018 waves that we got for this year. Um, so, you know, uh, definitely, I think it was uh, Wave 7 it got released. So, yeah, the Gold Series one definitely took oh, quite a while, but it's finally out for anybody out there who want to get this car if you guys prefer the black interior and the, um, the name banners on the rear. But pretty much the same, but um, the paint scheme is actually different for this year, which I do like. So, uh, very slick paint scheme, but might remind you that this is probably McMurray's last time in the number one McDonald's car, so it might be a good decision to get this car since we don't know what his plans are for next year, but yeah. Next up, we got Austin Dillon's number three Dow Daytona 500 race version, so really nice that we were able to get this car. This is yet another car that was released from NASCAR Authentics, which I just recently reviewed in my Wave 9 set of reviews. Um, so really nice right there. I mean, it definitely took a while for this to came out, but it's finally cool that we're back with the Daytona 500 race wins for the 164s. Because you guys know last year we couldn't get the Kurt Busch car um, in the 164 because of the Monster Energy logos um, and the sponsorship on the car. So really cool that we got that back. So um, definitely a must get for any Austin Dillon fans. Um, I'm sure Eric Amarola fans are not going to like this car though. Next up, we got another Ostilla car, which is his uh, real tree fishing car that he drove at the Spring Bristol Race. Uh, I would love to see this in one of the waves soon, if not maybe for 2019. But uh, um, if you're a big fan of the real tree schemes, this one definitely does look really nice. Uh, I believe uh, uh, someone pointed this out that uh, the paint scheme uh, where the blue and teal is, it's supposed to represent water. So uh, really nice effort that they put into this paint scheme. Uh, really do like this one. Next up, a lot of Mark Mar fans are going to love this one. Uh, we got uh, <laughs> Kamikaze Games. <laughs> we got Matt Kenseth's number six Roush All Star car. That, of course, you know, by the name of that, he ran this at the All Star race. So, <laughs> um, and this is a throwback to the classic Eagle One car that uh, Mark Martin drove. And I guess you could say Johnny Benson as well, because Johnny Benson also drove this in the number 10 car. But, um,. Yeah, guys, this is just freaking awesome. I mean, even down right to the classic number six, they got it perfect on this car. Um, even though they couldn't get, you know, that Eagle One or Babbling sponsorship, because, you know, that goes to uh, Henry Motorsports. But um, with all the effort they put into this, uh, especially just bringing back that classic number six that goes right with the paint team, I mean, uh, solid job, Roush. I mean, uh, usually we don't really see this many great Roush schemes, especially when it comes to the throwbacks. But this one, in particular, really really great effort so I, I probably recommend getting this car if we're not going to get it in NASCAR then it's um, must get that's for sure next up we got Chase Elliott's number nine Little Caesars Mount Dew car that he only drove at the June Michigan race so I mean um, I say it's definitely an improvement on like last year's I mean there's a lot more black on this um, still got that pinstripe design that we got going on similar to uh, the other Mount Dew cars I mean Pretty much makes sense because he did. Uh, he has the Mountain Dew sponsorship, and uh, I'm liking how you know they had that uh, double pinstripe design right there. So really nice. Uh, definitely gives me a nice classic look with that in mind. But um, you know, it's still pretty simple. But I gotta admit, it does look nice. However, though, look at that quarter panel. Though it is black. Hmm. Guess it's gonna be one of those cheat cars, eh? I <laughs> uh, just had to take some shots right there with everybody. You know, making those conspiracies about that with the um, NASCAR laser inspection system. But, um, yeah, really nice looking car that we got. Uh, I say get it, unlike last year's car. Next up, we got Kyle Busch's number 18 Skittles Dodge throwback car that, of course, he ran at the Southern 500, which is a throwback to the Ernie Irvin car. I mean, I can't really say too much about this car because I did recently review this car as well on my uh, authentic reviews. But in a long story short, I mean, easily still, still is still 
to this day for this year my favorite throwback i mean heck <laughs> we've had a lot of great throwbacks for this year but this one definitely screams childhood i mean it's right up there with the rainbow warrior car and uh, uh matt de Benedetto's, uh as well so uh, just freaking amazing man i mean th this year was definitely the comeback of the throwbacks compared to last year's but awesome looking car next up we got the daniel schwarz number 19 eris ruckus wireless car that i believe he first drove at the uh march uh phoenix race oh i'm sorry not phoenix ism <laughs> tell me guys in the comments uh, do you guys still call it phoenix because man ism just sounds just way too similar to you know ims so and but i mean i don't have dyslexia but if i it, it, I, I think i have somewhat of it because just seeing that just really screws my mind over but um yeah, he drove this at the ISM Raceway. God, that sounds so weird. But, um, yeah, I mean, th th this car, I mean, I actually thought it was canceled, but it actually wasn't the 164, so, you know, whoopsie daisy on my part. But, um, you know, fairly simple car. I mean, if you do have orange cars, this is probably one to get, but, um, I mean, it's definitely different compared to the Eris car, which is basically a throwback to Carl Evans' uh, Southern 500 win. <laughs> I had to point that out there because that was his throwback unintentionally but um you know decent looking car not my favorite Suarez car but something a little different next up we got uh the exact same scheme that matt kenza drove in victory lane at the phoenix race for last year sorry ism <laughs> we got uh, eric jones number uh, 20 circle k toyota camry so you know like i just pointed out similar scheme as last year's but um cool that we actually got this uh for um for the 1c4 scale because i i believe we did not got it for last year if i'm not mistaken but um cool to see some variety for some Air Jones cars, so really nice. Next up, we got William Byron's number 24 Hertz car that he first drove, and they actually changed the paint scheme uh, after this race. At the uh, He ran this at the All-Star Open, guys. So, um, yeah, you know, it's uh, pretty unfortunate. I mean, I do like this version of the Hertz car compared to the one that we are getting for next year, or that he changed mid-season, or like I said, just after he ran this car, uh, they decided to change the paint scheme, like Man, Henry Motorsports really love changing their paint schemes. But, um, you know, I probably would prefer this Hertz car over the next Hertz, uh, over the uh, the next Hertz car, which we're going to be getting um, in 2019, because that's his 2019 scheme, because they changed it uh, for next year. So, yeah, I really do like this car. The yellow's vibrant, and the black goes great. Um, got some great vibrant and contrast that we got with this diecast. Uh, solid, solid A for me. Next up, we got Chris Busher's number 37, Bush's Beans car, and, uh, huh, man, I mean, uh, if you love the color bronze, well, man, yeah, is bronze a color? I think so. <laughs> this car probably might suit you well. I mean, I thought this car was going to get canceled, but we finally got a Chris Busher car, um, that's not the, the Louisiana hot sauce car. I mean, I know I trash talked about that car since I, I don't really like uh, how the gradient was on that. I mean, I should, it should have been all black, but decided with this go with this gray, this grayish, maybe to represent smoke. But for this one, I probably like a little bit more. It's definitely different. I mean, uh, bronze and uh, yellow definitely is an interesting combo. Probably not the prettiest, but something different. So yeah, I'd say this is a, I mean, you could pass on this. I say, if you really need a Chris Busher car, this is the one to get, I would recommend, since he mostly drove this car for, you know, a good variety of races. Next up, we got the lucky Ford Leaf Clover car. We got Kyle Larson, number 42, Clover first data car that he drove, um, personally, at the uh, May Kansas race. So, um, yeah, another pretty solid-looking car. Um, you know, I really do like this. I mean, I didn't really, I don't really like collaborative paint teams, especially when you have, you know, one sponsor on when you have two different sponsors on a car it definitely doesn't go well um unless it's at the unless it's at the menards car but this obsession this uh with this ex exception i really do like this car you know the green and blue really go nice together and heck this i mean <laughs> kyle larson didn't really had a lucky season but if he did he probably should drive this car a lot more often well except for uh um ims because uh green cars don't usually run good at, I at uh, ims but um, with that in mind, I recommend we're getting this car. It does look really nice. I mean, green, man. You, you gotta love the color green. And last but not least, to wrap up the 164, is probably the best looking one that we got for this year. It is another race version. It is from the Daytona 500 race. We got Bubba Wallace, number 43, click and close to Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. This is the uh, this is a different version of this car, which is the race version, guys. I mean, the uh, picture doesn't really do it justice, but I kid you not, on the other side of this car, the passenger side of this car, this thing is tore up. I mean, I recommend getting this car. Definitely a much more better looking race version version that we got compared to his first start 
first cup start uh, car that was made in both scales for last year at Pocono Raceway. So um, really cool that we got another Bubba Wallace car produced, especially in the classic quick and close car. I mean, I love those purple cars, man. I mean, I'm sure my good friend Dave Land is probably going to get this car because, you know, <laughs> purple is uh, <laughs> a color you uh, definitely uh, need to have in your collection, that's for sure. But that wraps up on the 164s, and let's get on to the 124s as we're going to get very quickly to the 124s because we still got a lot of cool stuff to talk about. And I want to keep this as uh, short as possible for you guys because um, I know you guys want to... Uh, uh, I know this is going to be a slightly long episode, but I'm going to try to be as productive and uh, quick as I can, but we'll see. Um, we got ourselves a bunch load of 124s to be talking about. Uh, well, the first four are all driven by the driver of the number four car, Kevin Harvick. We have <clears throat> we have the ISM race win, we have the all-star race win, and we have the Dover win. Those are all the Jimmy Johns cars that he drove into victory lane that have now been released. I mean, not all of them. We do have some others that he didn't want in that scheme, but they've already been released. And we also got the Bushlight Kansas race win as well, which does look really cool. I mean, he actually won. This was actually, I think, the first time he actually did not drove a Jimmy John's car or a white car into victory lane until now. So, <laughs> so I mean, because um, remember, his last few victories were in the Mobile One car, which was white, or the Jimmy John's car. Well, that theory kind of went out the window when he won in this car. So, um, you know, I, I like poking fun at that real quick, you know, because a lot of people love coming up with these conspiracy theories of how Harvick's cheating and all that. Well, you know, except for those two races he got caught, but keep an eye on that Texas race because we'll be talking about that soon on the pre-orders. Um, we also got his teammate Clint Boyer in the number 14 Haas uh, Automation 30 Years of the VF1. That's a mouthful. His uh, second win, which came at Michigan with Storehouse Racing, so really cool. I mean, uh, Boyer definitely had a uh, that, that, that that's uh, that race was pretty memorable, especially with Boyer's uh, burnout. I mean, heck, uh, that guy looked uh, pretty happy, just like his kid Cash. I mean, heck, <laughs> Clint Boyer, one of the uh, in most interesting personalities that we got in NASCAR. Um, glad to see he's back in victory lane. I mean, he was pretty excited when he got that Marsville win and to top it off and winning at this range shortened race, I believe, and beating his teammate Kevin Harvick, who was dominant at the time, just well, was pretty excited. And plus, you know, how can you go wrong with Clint Boyer, man? I mean, the, the guy just has a kick-ass personality. Next up, we got Brad Moffins, number 16, Aston Group, Atlanta Truck Race win. So this is going to be one of the many truck wins that we got for our, um, well, spoiler alert, your 2018 uh, Camper World Truck Series champion, Brett Moffitt. So we're going to be talking about him very shortly on the pre-orders, but if you guys want this race, one, want, want one of his raced trucks that he won in his victory lane, uh, this is the one to get right here. Next up, we got some two Kyle Busch cars that are race wins as well, We got um, which are exclusive to the 124s. We got the Texas race win that he drove in the Interstate Batteries car. So, you know, not a big surprise right there. He usually drives that car into victory lane all the time at Texas. I mean, uh, heck, man, the Interstate Batteries car is quite lucky. It's a green car that gets pretty lucky at the Texas uh, spring race, so really nice. And we also got the M&M's Flavor Vote Richmond race win, which a lot of people are looking forward to this because they do love the paint scheme. Um, you know, I mean, we've had a lot of great variety of uh, M&M schemes for this year um, compared to last year, which, you know, Kyle Busch mostly just drove that Carmel car. So glad to see that uh, we were able to, you know, to, that Kyle Busch was able to, you know, bring in a lot of wins this season. And that makes a lot of great die casts. And this one in particular looks very nice. Next up, we got another 124 exclusive, which was canceled in with 64 scale, but it is William Byron's number 24 Liberty University Patriotic Car. Now, I mean, out of all the Patriotic Cars that we got for Henry Motorsports for this year, this one in particular is not my favorite. I mean, I find it funny how they changed the 24 um, color because uh, the red number was too hard to find or look on the car. Well, look at those Liberty University logos. I mean, uh, can you tell me that oh, that I can barely read what uh, those words say? I mean, I mean, if you look really closely, it does say Liberty, but from a far distance, I'm having a really hard time. So I'm hoping they can change up the paint scheme. Um, plus, you know, it's basically the same scheme as the original Liberty, Liberty University car. I mean, heck, they just uh, just uh, you know they decided to just put the patriotism on the logos instead of the scheme. So that's pretty unfortunate compared to the other 300 motorsports cars that we got for this year. Um, so, yeah, I mean, definitely I can see why I got canceled, but 124 is available for you guys. Next up, we got John Hunter Nemechek's number 42, um, um, Fire Alarm Services Lake City car, which pretty appropriately this car just got released because he did just recently drove this car 
uh, I think once at the uh, Homestead Miami uh, championship race. So really cool. I mean, um, really didn't think we were going to get another John Hare Nemechek car release, but um, this was one of the most recent releases that we got um, on uh, the 19th of November. So really uh, nice. It's in the Gold Series mold, so, uh, you know, the Xfinity cars don't really have that much uh, opening functions, but... Um, so looking for if you guys are looking forward to build up your uh, Nemechek collection for John Hunter, then this is the one to get for sure, uh, along with this original Fire Alarm Services car, which I do love that car a lot bit more than this one. Now we got some Bub Walls cars that are that you know are 124 exclusives as well. Uh, we got the Eckrich car, which you know it's been the same scheme since Amarola drove. So I mean nothing really in particular, maybe some slight changes. But um, another very vibrant green car that we got. I believe he drove this at the uh, May Dover race. And we also got um, probably another uh, uh, probably another one of my favorites uh, for this year, which was unfortunately canceled in the 1C4 scale. We got um, uh, Bubba Wallace's uh, Petty's Garage car that he drove at the uh, Spring at Talladega race, which was back in April, I believe. So, um, you know, this is basically the Medallion Bank car as well. I mean, if you guys remember the Medallion Bank car that uh, Marcus Ambrose used to drove and Eric Armola used to drove, that's basically what this is. I guess, uh, you know, Petty's Garage decided to team up with them because taxi business has kind of gone downhill a little bit lately. But um, this is another one of those cars where, you know, we've had two different sponsors, but um, it really does work well with this. I mean, I still think the STP car is a lot more better looking than this one, but. We still got those STP colors on there, even though this is not an STP car, which I find absolutely hilarious, but really cool looking scheme though. And last car to be talking about, which a lot of people are very surprised this car got made. Um, it was canceled in the West War scale as well. We got the Spencer Boyd number 76 grunt style car. I mean, um, Spencer Boyd, man, I mean, heck, uh, if you ever had told me that we would ever get a die cast made pro produced for him, I, I would think you're crazy. But no, um, you know, this is what happens right there. We usually get some surprises, uh, especially for any, uh, underrated Xfinity drivers and this is one of the guys right here so I'm sure Spencer Boyd is very excited to have a die cast produced um I, I bet your rear he's probably gonna get, have a majority of these autographs because <laughs> you know I mean that, when you're that dedicated to have uh, your own die cast uh, you know you did something right but um overall I mean I, we do got a lot of cool 124s and 164s on this episode guys but um we are gonna have to get onto the pre-orders now guys i mean there's gonna be no breaks right here we're going full circle into this one if you know what i mean so down to the pre-order list guys we got uh, seven pre-orders to be talking about and might as well go ahead and wrap up uh these ones right here because um it's been like a month since the last time i've done a diecast news so these one these first three are going to be basically uh my version of being a catch-up well these first four exactly not three i can't even count now <laughs> uh, we got john her name checks number 40 to fire alarm services pink kansas race win i know kansas that was quite a while ago but um yeah they actually um are offering this car um it's really nice um like i said you know more john hunter name check cars gotta love it uh that's you know we're getting some great variety when it comes to that but um you know fairly nice i mean i think this was uh no this is a 124 exclusive uh, my mistake um, we also got some Joey Logano. Um, spoiler alert, your 2018 Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series champion. This is the race that got him into the championship race, which he went on to win the championship. We got Joey Logano's Shell Pennzoil Martinsville Cup race win. Now, I think the only guys who probably won't like this, including myself, would be the Mark Truck Jr. fans. So, <laughs> mic drop. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I mean, this is definitely going to be a pretty favorite card to get, especially if you guys are not the biggest fan of Truex, but if you are for Logano on Plus, look how tore up that car is. I mean, definitely going to be a favorite race win, that's for certain. Uh, next, we got the uh, encumbered win of Kevin Harvick's number four, Mobile One Texas win. And I said encumbered because, yep, yeah, uh, Kevin Harvick got another no-no, and um, instead of getting eight wins, he now has six wins, which two are now encumbered. So uh, the Vegas race and now the Texas, well, yeah, uh, the Texas race. So, um, yeah, Kevin Harvick, man, <laughs> gotta love it. Um, unfortunately, he didn't want the championship, but who knows, probably could have gotten himself to, you know, another cheat, cheat bill. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, uh, once again, another Mobile One car that got into victory lane, but unfortunately... He got caught with that uh, spoiler. Um, with that, uh, he got caught with using an unapproved spoiler. So, so um, yeah, uh, this is another round of an encumbered win. I mean, it's pretty unfortunate uh, we can't uh, actually have a cucumber sticker on the car because <laughs> that'd be pretty hilarious. I mean, if Lionel has a good sense of humor, they would do that to these cars because um, they did do it with Joey Logano's uh, um, win from uh, a couple years ago. I think it was at Richmond, I believe. 
Um, next up, uh, the last card to, to play catch up on, we got Kyle Busch, number 18, M&M's ISM Cup Race win. And man, it's so refreshing to see the original yellow M&M's car back to Victory Lane. It's been a while, but we finally got it back to Victory Lane, guys. So I'm so glad they did that. Although those emojis, I mean, uh, it, I mean, well, we don't really have the emojis on this. We have the NBC logo, which you know, those are starting to grow onto me, but just I, I don't know how they're gonna look like on the um, on the 164s. But thankfully, this is a 124 exclusive. But um, you know, a lot's gonna be going on with this car. But um, definitely is gonna look nice, especially with all those race winner stickers. I mean, my God, eight overall, pretty incredible. It's unfortunate he didn't want the championship, but we'll get to that very shortly. And now get out to the championship, guys. I mean, here we go, guys. We got the race versions and the championship versions of Brett Moffitt. Well, first of all, let's start with the Truck Series champion. We got Brett Moffitt in the number 16 Aston Group uh, Toyota Tundra. Um, this car um, it, it, it does not have a championship car available, um, but it does have a Homestead Miami raced version car. Well, truck, actually. And what's even better about this car is that it will be the first ever raced version car that will be produced in both scales, guys. So I am really looking forward to this. I mean, you got to click that pre-order list, guys. So yes, a 164 raced version truck. Man, I cannot wait for next year. That's probably one of my most favorite features for next year, the race version trucks, which I heard on the latest episode on Lionel Racing The Fix that um, the president of Lionel Racing, uh, Howard Hitchcock, he said that possibly by the 2019, uh, that probably by the third wave of 2019, we will be getting uh, the truck cars. Well, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the truck cars, which I believe are going to be 2018s, but um, we'll probably get out to that very shortly and more info once I gave you guys uh, you know, a further analysis on that. Or when we get to NASCAR authentic selection, but um, something to note about. But pre-order, guys, pre-order. Otherwise, no. <laughs> who knows uh, what's gonna happen with these trucks? But man, that's awesome. Next up, we got your uh, 2018 Xfinity Series champion. I mean, I cannot believe I am saying this. I mean, I thought I picked Christopher Bell to win the championship, but man, these playoff systems just really just like to screw in my head. And who would have thought your Daytona winner, Tyler Reddick, not only just won the Homestead Miami race. He won the Xfinity Series Championship as well, which both the uh, race version and the Xfinity uh, Championship car will be um, it, it's in, it, it's on the pre-order list as well. But however, though, I will say there's one exception. Um, both scales are produced for the championship car, but it's only going to be a 124 exclusive for the race version, guys. So that's pretty unfortunate. Um, but um, man, I mean, Tyler Reddick, man, I mean, heck. <laughs> These playoffs, man, they just uh, they just keep getting more unpredictable. But um, congrats to him, and overall, congrats to your Motorsports, man. The third different driver in the number nine car went on to win the championship. Who knows, guys? This might be your replacement for Jimmy Johnson uh, coming in probably 2020 or 2021. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm making a false prediction right now, but with how things have been going with this nine team, I mean, it looks like that's uh, been the go-to car to go for and they get transferred to Henry Motorsports eventually. Um, next up, we got, uh, to wrap it up for the pre-orders, we got to talk about your 2018 Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series champion. Hurts me to say this, but it, it I'm over it now. It is, you know, the, the, the possible underdog coming into um, the rest of the season, which was dominated by the big three. We got Joey Logano. Not only he won the championship, he won the Homestead Miami race, and now he has joined the rest of the big three um, that have won the Homestead race and also the Cup Series championship. So congrats to Joey Logano. I mean, uh, he definitely had a lot of opportunities to win his first championship, but now all good things finally come to an end for here. I mean, um, really cool to see Tim Penske and Roger Penske, you know, cap off the championship. I mean, heck, overall, what a great year it's been for Team Penske, man. I mean, heck, they won, um, you know, the Supercar Championship with Scott McGoggin and um, the Indy 500 with Will Power, and now they are now a Cup Series champion with, um, you know, with, with one of their best drivers that they got in NASCAR, Joey Logano. But, um, yeah, the Miami version, the Miami uh, Cup raced uh, version is available, uh, I believe, in both scales, uh, including the um, 
championship version as well, which is, you know, on the, which is in both scales. This will have the uh, emoji as well, guys, so just to let you guys know that, I mean, by looking at the picture, it does have the Joey Logano emoji. But that wraps up on your pre-orders, guys, and now let's get on to yet another cancellation list as we are literally not going to be in, in any breaks whatsoever on this show, so I'm probably going to lose my voice after this uh, after this episode, but that's what I get for waiting for a month to do a diecast news video. We got to talk about the cancellations, guys, and man, oh man, we got some, you know, um, for 164 collectors out there, you are really going to be hitting the shitter for this one because we got, a, I mean, every single card that we got on this list has affected the 164s, so, you know, don't expect a miracle for these unless we get um, them in NASCAR Authentics uh, for 2018 or 2019. Well, here we go, guys. We got a NASCAR Classics car, which is pretty surprising um, in this list. We got Mark Martin's uh, number six, 1993 Darlington Race Win Valvoline uh, for Thunderbird. Only canceled in the 164 scale. I mean, that is absolutely unfortunate. I mean, I got faith that we're probably going to see this in NASCAR Authentics since they just started releasing the Classics line. Um, if you guys saw that Classics review of uh, Jeff Gordon, I mean, heck, I'm hoping we can get some more soon because uh, that video actually went pretty well. So I do appreciate you guys' support on that um, video and all these uh, videos that I upload. I mean, uh, really grinding on for the end of this 2018 NASCAR Diecast season. But, um, yeah, I mean, pretty unfortunate right there, especially for your hardcore Mark Martin fans. If you guys didn't know about this race, uh, you know, this was actually Mark Martin's, I believe, fourth Darlington win as well. I mean, just like Jeff Gordon. Uh, this was a three-hour, uh, this race actually had a three-hour rain delay, and this was also a, uh, a uh, um, I wouldn't say a rain shorter race, but the race was cut short because um, the um, because uh, the track was getting way too dark, so... Um, but, you know, Mark Martin, you know, one of the most likable guys that we ever got in the sport of NASCAR. Pretty unfortunate seeing this car getting canceled, especially in that classic Valvoline uh, for Thunderbird. I mean, man, that definitely brings back some memories, even though <laughs> I wasn't even born around that time. Uh, coming two years later, that's when I came into this planet. <laughs> but, um, man, pretty unfortunate right there. I mean, uh, hopefully... Hopefully, NASCAR Phoenix will save this car. Next up, this is a car I was expecting to get canceled, but not in just one scale, guys. We got Michael McDowell's uh, Cor uh, Corburn's um, car, which was uh, ran at the uh, playoff Kansas race. This was only canceled in the West scale, so pretty surprising. I mean, this car doesn't really have that much to it. I mean, um, heck, I don't even know what Corburn's ends. Um, <laughs> God. Um, I mean, that's just how pretty forgettable this car is. I mean, it's just one of those instances where we got, I mean, cool, we got another Michael McDowell car, but, um, you know, pretty underrated. But once again, I'm pretty surprised that this car actually got canceled. I think it also got canceled in 124 scale, but it was for a color chrome variant. So 124 ARC and the Elite is still available for pre-order, guys. Next up, we got Bub Wallace's number 43. I mean, what else, guys? <laughs> another Bub Wallace car canceled. This is actually canceled in all scales. It's his uh, Transport impact car which ironically is another car that ran at the playoff kansas race man i hate i i hate for any other cars to be eliminated in the playoff race <laughs> at kansas um well those two in particular were but um when it comes to cancellations that's my man not the actual playoffs because <laughs> these guys have a long shot making the playoffs but you guys know what i mean i just got that very broad sense of humor <laughs> tee -hee. But, um, yeah, this car was canceled in every single scale. So this is, um, you know, another generic looking car that's, um, you know, I mean, it's pretty cool that we got some green on this car. That's not the Eckridge car, but, um, I don't know. I mean, pretty underrated car. I mean, I do like the white top and the uh, petty blue, but, you know, I think we've seen a lot of schemes that look kind of like that. Nothing in particular, but just um, we've had a lot more superior schemes that we got for Bubble Wallace. But I'll give them a solid effort that they are trying to, you know, cram in as much Bubble Wallace cars as they can for this year. Because keep in mind, guys, we have a lot of Bubble Wallace cars that came out for this year. Um, next up, we got some um, man. <laughs> this one hurts me. I mean, but it's been a painful season for Jimmy Johnson. Well, spoiler alert, that's what it is. We got Jimmy Johnson number 48, Lowe's Maintenance Supply Car, canceled in both scales. So it looks like the 124 Elite version got made, but he, uh, this car might look familiar in particular, but I'm surprised this car actually got canceled because this was the car that he drove that almost won the uh, the, the playoff race at the Charlotte Roval. I mean, man, it would have been pretty ironic if you actually uh, got this car in the Amar Traction Sherry Strong car. I mean, that'd be cool a cool set, but um, I'm sure Johnson and Truex fans probably won't like that, but, you know, that was just a racing deal. They're not actually rivals compared to Legano and Truex, but, um, I mean, heck, I mean, it's pretty surprising that we actually got this car canceled. I mean, probably people were, you know, about, about 
Probably it's because of that emoji, if I had to guess. I mean, that's probably my only reason why this car got canceled, because of the emoji. That and probably Jimmy Johnson, you know, this is one of his worst seasons ever, so I'm sure his diecast sales are pretty low as well. Um, it's painfully, I mean, obvious to say that, but yeah. And last car I'll be talking about, which I did not really saw coming, but it didn't surprise me at all, considering how all the other Casey Kane cars were canceled. Only the 164 scale. This is another one. We got Casey Kane's uh, number 95, Dumont Gents, Dawn's a Throwback. This is also known as his last ride car. I mean, wow. I, this was canceled only in the 164 scale, but this is definitely, and I mean, this is definitely, definitely going to make it into a NASCAR Authentics Wave, especially with all the other Casey Kane cars that were canceled for this year. This one is definitely going to make because it's a last ride car. I mean, they cannot miss this opportunity right here. We've had every single last ride car produced in the Gold Series and in NASCAR Authentics. So we're definitely going to see this car in NASCAR Authentics as for certain. Even though it's going to be probably a late 2018 release for, uh, for, for the 2019 waves, which I know a lot of people just want 2019 cars, but I kid you not, in the first three or four or five waves, we're going to see this car in there eventually. I mean, I'm not a sidekick, but... Definitely, definitely we're going to see this car. I mean, so I will get too worried about that, but the 124 collectors, collectors out there are going to be happy about this car because it is pretty nice, especially if you guys are a big fan of uh, Casey Kane's most dominant season, which was in 2006. That's what the throwbacks paint to. But, yeah, guys, that wraps up on the cancellations, and now it's time to get on to the most interesting part of this video. You guys know what the time it is. It is NASCAR Authentics time, and it's time to get on to some... Uh, well, I almost said NASCAR Authentics Diecast Reviews, but that's what we're going to do in a separate video. It's time to do an official reveal and review of the, uh, long and behold, Wave 10 for NASCAR Authentics. So here's the reveal right here. I mean, I'm not going to get, you know, particularly um, in details on this because you guys know I will be reviewing every single car in this. But we do got ourselves 10 new cars. And, of course, this is yet a, the fourth time in a row we've got, uh, well... We got three, actually three exclusives, and we got another exclusive, which is uh, yet another liquid color car, which was, which is uh, pretty cool. But let's get down to numerical order and let's look at this. So we got uh, Barack Kozlowski's number two Reese draw tide car, which he drove at the March. Uh, he drove at two races. He drove at the uh, Martinsville race in March and the uh, Richmond race in, in September. So that was pretty recent. So. Um, yeah, I mean, um, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it is what, it is a 164 exclusive. You can't get this car anywhere else. So definitely would be another great addition for any Kislowski fans out there. Um, if it was not exclusive, if it, if this car was particularly not exclusive, I probably would pass on this, but considering that it isn't exclusive, I mean, I probably gonna have to get it now, but, um, you know, definitely something different. I, mean, I really do like this. I like how, you know, Brad Kislowski actually got his sponsors from, uh, uh, Reese and Draw Tide, which were his sponsors in the truck series um, when he had a team back then with with, with uh, BKR. Um, pretty cool that they were able to sponsor two races. I mean, I'm glad we got some more variety for Team Penske. I mean, heck, Team Penske, man, they've had a, a lot of cool paint schemes for this year, even though, I mean, uh, Ryan Blaney's probably were the best compared to the other two. But, yeah, uh, solid, solid uh, choice that we got right here. The next two in particular, we got Matt Kenseth, man. I know uh, my boy Eric uh, Eric Estep is probably going to love this car and probably is going to be excited when he goes to Walmart to find this car. We got Matt Kenseth, man, in the Wineham Rewards car that he first drove of uh, many races, which he first started this car at the uh, May Kansas race. So really cool. We also got the um, liquid color variant as well, which, man, that car just looks even twice as better. I mean, um, uh, what if you guys had asked me what has been my favorite liquid color car for this year i don't know i really love that casey kane dumont jets car but man i don't know i think this one is going to be probably my next favorite liquid color car because man this that blue man literally looks like a freaking ocean dipped in gold <laughs> it, it's like just that is beautiful man I, I can't believe i'm saying this but man i'm really loving the uh, liquid color cars it's only a matter of time before i get 124 guys or who knows maybe i'll actually put the color uh, the the uh, special finish cars on the uh, slideshow for next year, guys. I mean, if that's what's going to take, I mean, heck, uh, Lionel Race is doing a good job to persuade me to get into the uh, special finishes. But really loving that, guys. So just um, feel free to comment below if you guys found any of the liquid color cars uh, from the last four ways, including if you just recently found Wave 10 or the liquid color car, color car that I just talked about. So really nice. Um, next up, we got yet yeah, another exclusive car, which is uh, the Smithfield Patriotic Car. Oh boy, David Lance gonna love that one. Driven by, you know, the Smithfield Lord and Legend, Eric Amarola. So I mean, um, 
definitely it's not my favorite Amarola card that we got, but considering that this was this is a 164 exclusive, probably is another recommend I would get. I mean, you know I'm a sucker for 164 exclusives, so yeah, I mean it's it, it, it's a pretty nice looking car, but um, man, I, I I do like um, the the um, the um, the uh, original Smithfield car that we got from uh, Eric Amarola when he drove Richard Petty. I mean, because that car was just so patriotic. And um, this one, I mean, just, um, you know, the, 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 I think there's just a little too much black on this. That kind of ruins it for me. I, I think if they just uh, switch out the black and they probably would have put blue on it, I think it would look a lot more better. But still pretty nice. I mean, the red numbers look pretty cool. Next up, uh, I, uh, plus he also drove this car at the Coca-Cola 600. I mean, shocker. Another exclusive car that we got to talk about, which is at the Storehouse Racing uh, Group, we got Clint Boyer's man and the uh, Clint Boyer and the uh, Ford Hall of Fans car, which he drove at the uh, April Richmond race. So this is going to be probably the car that I think everyone's going to pass out on. But um, since it is another exclusive, I probably would recommend getting it as well. Um, even though I mean, I mean, uh, I, I probably would recommend getting all exclusives. I mean, with the Kazowski car, the Amarola car, and now the Boyer. I mean, heck, when was the last time we had three exclusives, guys? It's been quite a while, so, I mean, we're, we're looking really well right now. As a matter of fact, guys, I actually have Wave 10 in my hand, so this is actually really cool to review a full wave for you guys. Um, since you guys know I do these separate diecast reviews. I mean, a lot of people probably wonder why I never do the uh, wave reviews, because I do them all in the diecast news episode, so it'd be kind of redundant if I do it again, plus... I would kind of consider that a clickbait video uh, if I do that, so yeah. Um, but back to the topic, guys. Yeah, the Ford uh, NASCAR, um, the, the uh, Ford Hall of Fans um, presented by NASCAR um, car looks, uh, you know, pretty underwhelming, but I still recommend getting it. I mean, uh, even though I just kind of contradicted myself right there, but um, it's definitely different. That's probably all I got to say about that. Um, next one's probably one of my favorite cars that we got for NASCAR Authentics for Wave 10. And it is time to get hard for Paul Menard and the Quaker State Ford Fusion. Man, this car just looks amazing. I mean, every time I look at this car, guys, I'm probably going to say this a lot when I uh, do the diecast review and the What's in Stores uh, review um, of Wave 10, which will be uploaded probably right after this. So a lot of great uh, content that we got on this channel to wrap up for uh, 2018 NASCAR diecast season. This car reminds me a lot of the Mark Martin and Casey Kane Quaker State car that uh, they drove back in like what, like 2010 or 2011, I believe. I think it was 2011 when they first started it. So, um, man, th this car is amazing. It was actually a fun fact about this is that this car actually has the same paint scheme layout as the uh, Ryan Blaney Pennzoil Menards car. So, um, I'll probably have to do side by side comparison on that when I do the diecast review of this, but really nice looking car i mean it's a shame we didn't get the menards car but this really makes up for it but um yeah next up we got some john throwback cars as well which uh i mean this one in particular is probably gonna hit the sh is gonna you know be swiped off the shelf especially during the holiday season we got uh, jeff Go i mean oh i'm sorry this is william byron's number 24 exalta john's throwback chevrolet camaro cl1 Man, I almost got caught off guard right there. I thought Jeff Gordon was actually, uh, you know, coming out of retirement and driving the 24. That's how great looking this car is. But man, I mean, the metallic blue, the rain, the classic Rainbow Warrior, and just, I mean, if you want to talk about a vibrant paint scheme, this is probably how vibrant you can get for an NASCAR diecast. I mean, without a doubt, if you do not have Rainbow Warrior car in your collection, get this car and get the NASCAR Classic car as well, because. Man, this car will stand out in your collection. I mean, I know we just had the Don Throwback car um, for Jeff. I mean, well, it wasn't really a Don Throwback car, but I know we just recently had this car represented in the Chevrolet SS mold at the uh, at the uh, 2015 Bristol race. But this car never drove at the Don race until now, so it was cool to see that because, you know, <laughs> 3M decided to sponsor Jeff Gordon at the Don race. So, yeah, that was a big buzzkill. Um, another throwback that we got to talk about, which is yet another Jeff, which is in the commentating booth, ironically. We got uh, Matt Dean Burrito, guys. We got a Dean Burrito car, guys. It's been a while since uh, I think last time we got one was uh, with um, when he drove for BK Racing. So um, that's awesome. We, that's awesome. We got another Matt. Uh, 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 I almost said Dean Burrito, but yeah, I also said it, but <laughs> that's his nickname. If you guys didn't know that. Matt Beninetto, guys. Another one of my favorite cars that we got for uh, this wave and in particular for um, the Dawn's throwbacks. I mean, the classic Jeff Burden Excide Batteries car. I mean, my God, this car is just beautiful. 
another car that is just screaming childhood in my names. I mean, man, I mean, just, oh, God, it, this car is just freaking amazing. And to top it off, uh, Jeff Burden even kindly to sign on the corner panel on the um, where uh, the rear tires are, right in front of the rear tires, actually. So, I mean, heck, um, this car, um, actually, no, this car does not have Jeff Burns' name on the uh, name rail, but still really nice. I mean, I'm actually looking at these cars while I'm uh, doing this review. So, I mean, pretty unique experience that um, we were able to get this car produced. So, just, man, I can't wait for the full review on this car. I I'm going to get so excited on that car. <laughs> Next up, we got AJ Allmendinger's number 47 Kroger Quick List car. First of all, can we uh, can we uh, put F, uh, can we um, can we please please put in the chat in, in the chat um, pay F for respects for um, our good friend AJ Allmendinger. Um, heck, it's been a while since we had an AJ Allmendinger car release, guys. I think dating all the way back from Spin Master, uh, we had a Bobby Labonte car released as well for JT Doctor Racing as well. So um, yeah, we've had that much 47 cars released. I mean, this is probably the third one that we've ever got in NASCAR Authentics, but first for Lionel Racing. So. Um, Pretty appropriate. I mean, I didn't think they were going to actually make this car. Probably gives me some hope that we're probably going to see a Ryan Priest or a Chris Buescher car in one of these waves very soon. I mean, it would only make sense, you know, since they have an Amadeer car now. So, probably going to get a Chris Buescher car next if they're going to have it. But, um, yeah, I mean, this car definitely is nice. It's definitely another one of those underrated uh, cars with the underrated team. Just um, adds a lot of great variety for this wave. So, I, I love it. And the last card we talk about to wrap up this diecast uh, news episode, we got to talk about Alex Bowman and the number 88 Nationwide Patriotic Car. This is the third time we've got a Patriotic Car released for Henry Motorsports and NASCAR Authentics. So that just leaves out William Byron's Liberty University Car, which probably will be made in NASCAR Authentics because, I mean, it would only make sense because he's the odd one out right now. Plus, that is an exclusive as well. So it'll make sense if Lionel Racing actually makes that car even though I don't really like that paint scheme but back to the Alex Bowman car guys I mean uh, this um, you know probably my third favorite uh, I mean of course uh, if I had to rank all the Hendrick Motorsports uh, Patriotic cars Johnson's number one and then uh, Chase Elliott second Bowman third and Byron fourth so um, yeah Bowman's I mean uh, I still kind of like last year's but this year's I mean definitely kind of kept what last year's was going for but um, last year's was more on the star on the stripe side. This year they went with the stars, so I find that pretty interesting that they did that. But I'll probably get into more in, in, in details reviews uh, when I do the uh, review on this car. Overall, guys, Wave Ten probably looks like my favorite. I know I say that every single wave, but um, with Wave Nine and Wave Ten, those are the first waves I've ever got every single car. All right, well besides the liquid color car, but. Man, I mean, when, we, when you get every single car in, when you buy every single car in a wave, you know you've got yourself a strong collection, and um, you made a strong de decision. And I'm glad to see Lionel Racing, um, you know, has taken notice into this. I mean, they know that they have a big fan base with the NASCAR Authentics lines, so I'm glad to hear about that. And, man, I mean, I'm not going anywhere for 2019 when it comes to NASCAR Authentics, man. I'm probably even uploading even more diecast reviews, even though my uh, shelf's in my uh, wall space is saying, oh, please, God, no more. <laughs> <laughs> but um, overall, guys, Wave 10, absolutely freaking amazing. I love everything about this wave. Feel free, to feel free to comment below if you guys got anything else to share on this Diecast News episode. Feel free to tell me anything else you guys want to know about um, what's latest in the NASCAR Diecast News world. But uh, this ends up being the penultimate episode of the NASCAR Diecast News. And um, um, we'll probably do one more. But if that's the case, then I will catch you guys on one more episode of the Diecast News. Until we get on to the Season 8 finale of the NASCAR Diecast News. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, feel free to comment below, subscribe for more. And um, this has been Original Big Bry. And um, I will catch you guys hopefully on another 2018 uh, episode of the NASCAR Diecast News.